most people are ready to start practicing something before they've actually learned it. You've got to learn it first. Most people equate learning and practicing to the same thing. Those are not the same steps for me personally. The worst way or, or a mistake when you're trying to practice something fast is to practice it slow. That you have to practice it fast. Is that a, is that a misunderstanding that a lot of guitar players have? Or do, oh do I, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of my favorite things to stir up. So now we're gonna stir up the stir comments section. Stir up the section. pot a little bit we're here, Andy. Make everybody mad. Because maybe I've been doing this wrong. Because I always <laughs> practice stuff slow. Oh. That's what I was always taught. So tell me otherwise. Okay, Andy. Uh, okay. This is funny, right? Because I know everybody's gonna be arguing in the comments. Um, I think that you don't practice slow. You have to practice at the speed that it's gonna be played at. I'm going to tell you why after I tell you this. You've got to learn it first. Most people equate learning and practicing to the same thing. Those are not the same steps for me personally. Learning it and having the knowledge of what is the correct roadmap on the fretboard changes or technique or whatever, learning it is the acclimation of what, it's like the acquiring of what it is. Most people don't spend enough time on that. They're ready to start practicing it. But they'll sit there with a metronome and play. So let's take a lick that's real kind of industry standard bluegrass lick. Right? Yeah. Most people will probably practice that. Now watch my hand. Now if I play that fast... It's, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. So even though I'm starting with a downstroke and following with an upstroke and repeating as necessary, that's not the same feeling in my hand. So if I practice it slow, you're going to get to a certain BPM and be like, I can't do it any faster. Well, that's because you're practicing the wrong thing. You're not practicing it where it needs to be. It needs to be like a buffing wheel that's just flying, and you need to be able to polish it at tempo because that that mechanic is different right like um uh that's a completely totally different thing totally different mechanic yeah. then look at the swing it's like i'm like using all of this motion and like time literally time to keep time of right. the groove well, at tempo, when that's like you've got, it's a, it feels different. So most people are ready to start practicing something before they've actually learned it. And as they play, they're hitting wrong notes, so they're trying to keep playing it slow. You see how this feeds itself? Yeah. Learn the mother Learn effort. Slow. Learn it. Yeah. And then play it where it needs to be. If the tempo to one of those tunes is cooking like that back it down but don't back it down by much you back it down maybe 10 if anything's north of a buck yeah. 85 you need to be practicing those, it like the one that always kills me is uh the sugarfoot rag on the brent mason album yeah yeah, yeah that yeah. is so fast i could never even play it that uh, fast like you know it's like that that's a you know to play you know whatever the line is yeah. Like you've got to be able to to drive at that tempo because by by that let me let me clarify that. To drive at tempo means to be clear minded. Right? Yeah. You're not you're not stressing about it because I want to be able to play my own leads at the that tempo. Like I like the 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 big tidal wave hit me earlier last year when I was really starting to get on stage with my guitar heroes and i was like okay you're now doing you're trading solos with these guys these are the dudes you grew up listening to and you're trading solos with them you can't just play their solos back to them yeah why not because they go they don't want to hear that they want to hear something well, else. they're going to play their solos they're, right right so <laughs> it's lame good. it's lame so, if you're so so, so when you you know when you're in these opportunities it's a real eye opener and to go, yeah, well, now why am I here and what am I going to play? So if I'm trading solos with Brent on Blowing Smoke or Hot Wired or whatever, um, I want to be able to play creatively and sound like me, right? 
So if I'm stressing about I can't get the notes to be clean, my mind's already in the wrong spot, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So like that 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 equation and reasoning of of, of technique and speed comes from the point of view of very much a bluegrass kid. It's the same mentality, right? Like if I'm going to play, uh, you know, Salt Creek or Big Mon or one of these old bluegrass tunes on mandolin, I don't want to be hanging on for dear life with my legs flapping in the wind. I want to be like driving the thing at tempo, you know. So, so uh, practicing needs to happen close to tempo because you want you you want that to be a familiar thing that happens. Um, I'll give you one more example. You ever been on a gig? And there's one or two licks coming in the gig. Let's say the gig's 85 minutes long. Yeah. But there's two moments in the gig where you're like, God dang it. Yeah. And you're watching it all night. And you're just stressing out about it. And then when it finally yeah. gets there, you you might nail it, you might blow it, but you just kind of watch it go by. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been there, but right? You know what? Sometimes those licks, for me, aren't even technical stuff. Oh, stuff. it doesn't have to be, right? Sometimes it's like very exposed stuff that you just have to nail and so play perfectly. So that's the same mentality. Yeah. The way you would practice that is to practice that vibe and that gets into what does it mean to practice and for me it means playing these tunes standing up like my my records have a lot of hard stuff to play or i think it's hard it's like not easy for me um i gotta stand up and do it and look at the crowd and yeah. entertain and right. not look like yeah and be able to do my i gotta be comfortable you know, I've got to be able to address my band members and, you know, like do do the thing, do the thing. So it's like practice means more than taking 25 swings at it. And then when I get the one that I nailed, putting that on Instagram. The irony is most of the things I'd say 95 percent of anything that I post online is within the first three takes. It's just because, like, I want to hurry up. I want to get to the next thing. And, you know, it's like my life is not creating, you know, perfect 30 second videos yeah. so when anybody sees anything you know it's like i've got to where i use a lot of cell phone footage because i want people to hear how hard i'm hitting because i actually play a lot harder than people realize you know it's like uh you know if i'm playing uh really snapping it that's where the tone yeah. is you know if i put the dirt on it <laughs> You know, it's, it's like yeah. the, the tone is there. I actually use less gain. This is like everything control is wide open. You know, if I split the coil, that's still the same yeah. gain as, you know, it's all, all, all at that same level, this being the distortion pedal. The thing that always surprises me about your playing, like you were just playing free range chicken a second yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. The thing that always surprises me is that you actually don't hybrid pick that much because you're mostly alternate picking. Right. But to me, that's weird. Wouldn't you have wanted to have developed alternate picking being such a Brent Mason fan? I do when I'm chicken picking. Yeah. When I'm doing the clean amp back pickup telly thing, it's... It's this. It is yeah, that. It is that. Thing. It has yeah. to be. Like, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's like, let's just use an audio example here. So if I got as, as, as tell you as a humbucker can be, um, let's play uh, versus. I mean, it just, that's where the tone is, yes. you know? Yeah. Uh, You know, it's like that's that's so much of that attitude that that I love in Brent's playing, you know, and you can't get that with a pick. But do you like in like free range chicken, for example, off your solo record? Yeah. Charisma. Yeah. Well, shameless plug. Shameless guys. plug for Charisma, the solo record em. from Andy Wood. Why? To me, I would almost think that song in the vein of it, you were very OK just alternate picking the whole thing versus it, hybrid picking it. Yeah, because the tune wasn't written as a chicken picking tune at all. Really? It was written as a Dixie Dregs thing. Yeah. Kind of a Steve Morse Dregs-ism. Right. And on the demo, I had written that, uh, you know, the name is, you know, it's like, I was like, oh, well, we got to have some kind of moment where it goes to telly chicken Something, picking yeah. things, right? So on the demo, I was playing it. And uh, I see, maybe it was my buddy Tra Travis Toy. It was one, one, of the, one of the bros it said, man, wouldn't it be cool to get Brent on that? And I was like, oh, yeah, but, you know, he's too, 
he's too busy and famous, whatever, you know. Travis like, man, you should just text him. Maybe he'll do it. And sure enough, I, I, I sent the text. I was like, hey, man, I don't know. I, you know, uh, he's like, man, I'm honored. And I was just floored. And then when he turned in the solo, uh, the first the first solo, he turned in one on Friday. I remember this. And uh, it was a heater, like full-on Brent heater. By Saturday afternoon, he had texted me. He goes, hey, man, don't use that one. I want to send you a good one. I was like, what? Okay. So then he sent the one on like And Monday, was it better? And it was the one that's on the record. It, what, was it better, though? Did you listen to it? It's not better. It's different. 